headed right now to TJ Seafood. I asked a poll on Instagram, like which recipe did they want? And it was between eggplant sliders with harissa, which I thought sounded really delicious, and salmon tataki. And I threw the salmon one out there thinking people aren't gonna wanna do that. And everyone said salmon tataki. So, we're headed right now to the fish market. I get this question a lot. People are like, oh, can I just use a salmon from my grocery store? And the answer is usually no. <laughs> you will know very quickly if you can use that salmon. It's a different quality salmon. This is called sushi grade salmon and people, I know they're gonna say something on the internet. There's no such thing as sushi grade salmon. Well, you buy the salmon from your grocery store and eat it raw and then let me know. Sushi grade salmon um, basically has been frozen at a really, what is it, low temperature? And it kills off all the bacteria. That way, when it falls out, you could eat it raw. <laughs> He said you could eat it raw. I know. I Whoa. Wait, what is this called again? Salmon sushi. What is What's the recipe? Salmon tataki. Salmon tataki. What the heck is salmon, salmon tataki? tataki? Like people like me, I literally have no idea what you're talking about. You've maybe heard of tuna tataki. You get this at most, mostly seafood restaurants, um, maybe even poke restaurants. The sushi grade fish in sauce. Everybody loves it. Even if you're not a sushi fan, you'll probably love this one. This one I feel like I could like show out for wifey, you know? Like, oh yeah, bust yeah. this out and make it surprise on a date night and she'd be like, wait, what is this? What? I'll tell you huh? what, <laughs> the true story. I made this for a date night, for a Tinder date. And it went over very well. <laughs> See, the internet, I was right. Maybe you were wrong. Look at that. What does that right there? It says sushi grade. Sushi grade salmon. All right, so we're back in the kitchen. Let's put together our salmon tataki. I thought we would also pair this with some wonton chips. So I've made these before, but with some hoisin sauce. Today, we're just gonna keep it pretty simple. So what you're gonna need is you're gonna go and grab some wonton wrappers. And I'm gonna lay like three or four down here. Just cut this diagonally. Perfect. And one more cut right down the middle and beautiful. Heard a, I heard a lot of great comments about this recipe when I first made it um, about three or four years ago. Um, and some people said that, that, that their chips did not get crispy enough. Today we're gonna try something different. Today we're gonna try to air fry them. So grab your air fryer basket, here's mine. And just add in the wontons. Line them all up. Now you can do two things. You can grab a brush or a paper towel and you can lightly brush these with a little bit of sesame oil. Now this is gonna be a very tedious task to do this and you wanna be careful that you don't get these sopping wet and I think that's what happened last time when people were adding in the peanut sauce. So this go around, just keep it really simple. We're gonna take some avocado oil because it's gonna be air fried and just spray them. And then we're going to sprinkle on just a little bit of sesame. All right, now we're gonna place these in our air fryer for about four to six minutes at 350. Okay, so while the chips are being um, baked in the oven, we are going to move on to our salmon. So this is the salmon that we just bought from TJ's. So again, the best thing to buy is the sushi grade salmon. And there is no such thing technically as sushi grade. I give you that, I understand, but that is the common way to denote between a fish that you can eat raw and a fish that you can't. If you don't wanna go buy sushi grade, you can just, hey, just ask the, you know, the butcher, hey, can this be eaten raw? Let me just reiterate how cost effective it is to make stuff like this at the house. I can't imagine how much this would cost in a restaurant. Where is that fly? You know, on Breaking Bad, when that fly got in and he was like, we've got to sterilize the whole place and where is it coming from? <laughs> Next thing, grab yourself the sharpest knife that you have in your house. We're gonna cut this into manageable chunks. So all we're gonna do is we are going to cut these into really small cubes. And once you cut them into strips, then dice it. And after four minutes, wow, these look extra crispy, even crispier than the first batch I made. I'm gonna take these out, allow these to cool and harden. All right, so now that this is all chopped up, we're gonna add it to a bowl and then bring everything together. This is the easiest recipe that you'll make. Ugh. Next, we're gonna add in some avocado. So grab a ripe avocado, take out the pit, and then 
and this one's really nice and ripe. Then you're gonna go to the grocery store and buy a seaweed wrapper. And now we're gonna just crunch this up. If, you, if it won't break like this, then take it and we're gonna chop up the seaweed wrapper and then just sprinkle this in, just like that. You can use all or part of it, it's up to you. We're gonna grate in a little bit of ginger, about an inch of it, add in some red onion, some sesame oil, some low sodium soy, finish it off with a little bit of sesame seeds. Then I'm just gonna gently fold everything together. Let the flavors meld together and this is just gonna be delicious, I'm telling you. You can enjoy this as an appetizer or even as a meal over a bed of lettuce. Okay, now for the taste test. Ooh, okay, I got a question though. Yeah? I'm curious about the seaweed wrapper. Like, what does that taste like? Is it more of a fragrance thing? Like, Well, you've had sushi, on? right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like that, it's that seaweed wrapper that goes around the sushi. Okay. So it just, it tastes a little bit more like, it tastes kind of fishy. In fact, here. You wanna taste one? I could try it. Let's do, um, <laughs> oh, you know what we should do? <laughs> Let's do a competition. Okay. All right. We're oh gonna, my gosh. We're gonna tip this in half. <laughs> okay, so this is the ultimate party setup right now. We've got the chips, we've got our drinks. Here, we got some Topo Chico. All right, so here's yours, here's mine. The first person to finish it wins. Okay. Ready? Wait, 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 you can't fold it already. You had to be so. Go. Oh my God. <laughs> Let me see you laugh. <laughs> ah. Ow, but. <laughs> yes! Dang. Okay, this will be better on your palate. <laughs> oh, and quick note, as you see, these are extra crispy, beautiful and golden, but the sesame seeds fell off. That's because on the first recipe I did, I covered them up with a little bit of hoisin, and that hoisin was kind of sticky, and it let them stick to the chips. Without it, they're not gonna stick, so it's okay. They are still extra crispy, like Whoa. you would want them. I know, right? That's a good chip. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. Doggone it. <laughs> Tell me, if you don't like that, get out. I just, I need to try one more. Well, no, just see. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. I hope that y'all really enjoyed it. I know you're gonna love this recipe whenever you make it at home. I want you to comment below how you would customize this recipe. If you like videos like this, then I invite you to smash that like button below. And if you're new to the channel, then I invite you to subscribe and to join our global community. And don't forget to ring that bell, ding, 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 so you can be notified every time we post hot new content here in the Fitman Cook Kitchen. And remember to follow me on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter for daily inspiration and everything else in between. All right, guys, thank y'all so much for watching. Until next time, I want y'all to keep it healthy, but of course, never, ever boring. Boom! Bye, y'all.